Arguably the biggest sporting tournament in the world is the FIFA World Cup, which begins very soon in Qatar. Being that it happens every four years and being one of the biggest tournaments in the world, there will be some huge betting interest in the tournament, whether that be from your average Joe who just likes to place a couple of dollars on a game for fun, all the way up to your biggest syndicates in the world, or just people who, who make a living from sports betting and really trying to you know find an edge betting on the World Cup. No matter how big of a sports better you are, this video will help you improve your sports betting on the World Cup. It should make you profitable, and if not, it will certainly minimize your losses as the tournament goes on. But before I get started, please make sure you subscribe to this channel and click the bell so you get a notification every time we post any content surrounding the FIFA World Cup. It is a scam when you don't allow everyone to operate on fair terms. We are the Robin Hoods of sports betting. We take something back from the rich bookies and enable our customers to beat them instead. My first tip for betting on the World Cup is finding the best price on whatever you want to bet. So let's just say your favorite team is Qatar in the World Cup, or it's England, it's Germany, it's Spain. Every time you want to bet on Spain, whether you think that, you know, maybe they're your favorite team or whether you think they're just going to win all of their games, always try and find the best price available at the time when you're going to bet. Now for that, to find the best price, you can either do it manually, which is going to take a lot of time, look at all the bookmakers you have accounts with and find the best price, or you could use something like Odds Checker. So looking at this uh, Odds Checker screen is a great example of finding the best, best price on an event. Say you wanted to bet on Qatar to make it out of their group A. You're thinking, I'm happy to take anything that's, you know, around market price. So it looks like, you know, most bookmakers have got them around five to six, something like that. I'm happy to bet that. But if you had an account at VBet, as you'll see on Odds Checker here, you can get them at sevens to qualify out of their group. So that takes your bet, which may have been a non-value bet or you know, maybe just not a great bet, something that's not gonna win long-term if you placed it over and over. And it could turn that into a, a profitable bet, or maybe at least it's a, it's, a, it's a much better bet than the one you were gonna place if you were gonna place them to win uh, to, or to get out of their group at fives or sixes. There's another one called Odds Portal, which is a good comparison site, which may open you up to, to a few more, um, few more bookmakers' prices. But overall, it's the same with any other kind of sports betting. The more bookmakers you have, the more opportunity you have to make money on sports betting. Because if, you're all, if you've got 20 different bookmakers, let's just say 10, doesn't really matter, as many as possible, the more you have, let's say it is 20, you've got 20 different prices most likely. Some will be the same, of course, but you've got 20 different opportunities to get the best price on a sporting event, in this case, the FIFA World Cup. My second tip for betting on the World Cup is fading the big teams. And what I mean by fading is betting against the biggest teams, also known as laying, if you heard that term before. So betting against those big teams with the, you know, the big country names, your Brazil's, the favorites, essentially. Brazil's, England, Germany, Spain, those, those known footballing nations who have probably won World Cups in the past or at least been hugely successful. Betting against those teams. Now, I'm not going to sit here and say this will be, it will 100% be profitable throughout the tournament. It might lose you money. The reason I'm saying this is because most of the time, those prices on those teams are going to be shorter than they should be. Why do I say this? Because most, most sports bettors are coming from those nations when they're betting on the World Cup. You know, think about England, for example. It's a huge nation. United States could be a good example of that in the World Cup. These teams that have got huge followings, bigger than smaller, you know, some smaller nations like Australia or something like that. Maybe Australia's not a great example, but I'm sure there's nations that are much smaller than Australia out there. So more likely that these, because there's going to be a lot of fan money, all that kind of stuff, they're going to shorten those prices down on those bigger teams. Similar to what you might see in the English Premier League, for example, your Chelsea's, Man United's, Arsenal, Liverpool, those big teams are generally going to be shorter in terms of value than what they should be just because uh, they've got a 
massive fan bases and it's the same in the World Cup. Like I said, this may not be profitable, but I would rather be fading the bigger teams just because they've got the name value and they've also, you know, got huge amounts of fans uh, supporting them. Other thing to note with the big teams too is, you know, yes, they're better than the other teams, but also this isn't like a regular... Uh, soccer season, let's just say the English Premier League, for example, you know, man, the Man Cities of of the of the English Premier League are not really comparable to like a Brazil or an Argentina or a France of the World Cup. Man City have played <laughs> so many games together as a team. They've had the same manager for a long time. They're the best in the league because they've got all these systems in place that the players are well aware of. They've played a lot of games together. You compare that to a team like Brazil or France, yes, they're the big favorite for the tournament, just like Man City are for the for the EPL, but they don't have those repetitions together like like they would. So obviously the odds are gonna reflect this in a lot of ways, but when you're betting on individual matches in, in the in the World Cup, just keep in mind that those bigger teams are most likely gonna be shorter than what they should be. Tip number three. Get prepared for the tournament a little earlier than everyone else, especially if you're someone who's maybe not a professional sports better or, you know, just someone that has a lot more time on their hands, maybe a university student of some kind, maybe you just study full time and and don't have any jobs on the side, you just got a bit of spare time, get ahead of the market a little bit and and start to prepare for the tournament because there will be some prices out there weeks, maybe a month before the tournament that are slow at adjusting just because the popularity is not there and the big players aren't there trying to bet these games for one the the european season doesn't doesn't end till about a week before the world cup so that gives you that basically gives syndicates or big players a week to prepare for the world cup maybe i'm sure they can prepare earlier but they're not going to be fully focused on those tournaments until that week the tournament starts and then there's also a lot of unknowns about Qatar. It's not a place where a lot of football is played, or at least that a lot of um, popular football is played. So it's an unknown location, unknown pitches, unknown traveling distances between stadiums, weather. These are things that you can start to factor in now when you look at all the odds. Um, and, you know, maybe odds don't reflect if a... I'm sure if an Mbappe got injured, the odds would reflect... You know, the odds would go up on France to win the tournament... But maybe some of those, you know, those lesser nations, if there's a um, a player that goes down injured, they could be holding some some poor prices there that you could potentially lay yourself. So these are things that you can look at if you do have time. Prepare a little bit earlier because a lot of these odds have probably been out for years. You know, people, these markets, these World Cup winning markets, have been out for years at a lot of bookmakers. So I'm sure there's some poor prices in there. Tip number four would be to watch the round one games, the first the first group games essentially, and and a lot of the market reaction will be off those first games because these teams don't have a massive preparation going from European football or you know their regular league football into the World Cup. These players haven't played much football together, if any. So look to maybe favour the teams that have played a lot of football together, but also try and get a read off those round one games. Maybe you get a shock upset that literally is a shock upset and it wasn't because the team played too well. They just, you know, as we know, football, it's a low scoring game and and some shock results can happen. So maybe you can make some adjustments off those first games. Let's just say England, uh, for example, England are, are smashed in their, in their first game and they actually played really well and deserved to win. The market's probably really going to flip on its head there and not favour England for, for the rest of the tournament or at least be a little bit low on them. So this is just an example of things that you can look at and really try and gauge, um, get a read on a, on a team nice and early to see, you know, whether their round one performance, which should have a huge influence on the rest of their odds as the tournament goes on, um, yeah, is either an overreaction or an underreaction. A lot of the bookmakers will leave their odds up for the second round of games, for example. So you could see that as an opportunity. If you see Brazil's playing unbelievably well, let's just say, 
you could look ahead to their round two game while they're in play and bet them then because you know as the days go on I'm sure those odds would drop if Brazil played really well for example you could also look at betting these teams live um, I assume the market will factor in a lot of the stuff if in in play in terms of if a team's dominating or not but definitely an angle that you could look at as a sports better my last tip for betting on the World Cup is just being wary when you're looking at subscribing to a tipster or a tout for their tips on the World Cup. Potentially, you may follow a tipster that's really a really good uh, football or soccer better, and they're really good at betting a particular league, like the Premier League, Serie A, Bundesliga, Championship, whatever the league may be. They're really profitable. Maybe they've got like a 5 10% ROI on betting on these on these just particular leagues. So they may think, all right, you know, I'm doing well on the, the Premier League this season. Now I'm going to try and I'm going to create a subscription package for the World Cup. There's a huge difference about betting on the, on, the, on the World Cup or international football and betting on league football. The reason they may be, let's just say, really profitable in the English Premier League is because they know all the players, all the teams, all the managers home and away kind of records looking at you know how, how te- certain teams were forming at home and away whereas you then go to an international game and you've just got completely different conditions not only are you in a different country they're surrounded by different players how well does for example let's just say you, uh, a lot of the uh, Australian football players will be coming from the Australian A-League how well do they know that league and would you trust a bet uh, for or against the Australian football team when um, when they're kind of just concerned with the EPL and their normal you know day-to-day doings. So I'm not saying don't follow a tipster. I'm sure there are profitable tipsters out there when it comes to international football. What I'm saying is just be wary. Do, do a little background check on, on your tipster that may be very profitable in some other leagues and... Um, and see if they've had you know previous experience betting on on international football, and um, and yeah, if that's if that's something that you can see as being profitable, or whether it's just a, you know something that they're looking to expand on, and maybe they're not as confident on as their as let's just say one league that they've been betting on normally. And they are my five tips for betting on the World Cup. Before I go, I will mention that yes. Trademate Sports is a good tool to use. Also, I don't want this to turn into a plug for Trademate Sports. But yes, that's a good software to use, kind of tracking the sharpest bookmakers around the world and, um, you know, working in real time to find the best prices on certain events and, and some edges here and there that will pop up through injuries or form and all this kind of stuff. So that is definitely a valid tool to use. But thanks for watching. Please, as I mentioned before, give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, click the bell. There may be some content coming throughout the World Cup on this channel, so please make sure you click the bell so you get notified to all those new videos coming through. Thanks for watching.